Well, in compliance with Chapter 231 of the Open Public Meeting Act of the State of New Jersey, adequate notice have been given to all members of the governing body, the local source, and the Westfield leader, and the two newspapers designated to receive such notice. This notice is also posted on the uh, Borough Hall uh, Bulletin Board. Let's all stand, please. I'd like to start out tonight with a moment of silence for the three lost lives and the many injured in the uh, Boston bombings. Our thoughts and prayers are with their family. And now we'll have an invocation from Councilman Mortimer. Dear Lord, please look after those uniformed personnel that are keeping us safe from acts of terror and from natural disaster. Please look over our citizens and look over us as we make the decisions that we hope will benefit the borough. Amen. Amen. Aye. Pledge, Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America, America and, and to the, the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Martha, roll call, please. Councilwoman Andre? Here. Here. Councilman Lane? Here. Councilman Messler's absent. Councilman Mortimer? Here. Councilman Turner? Here. Councilman Wass is absent. Uh, next, we have the approval of the minutes of the regular and executive session uh, meetings. Uh, on uh, March 19, 2013. We have a motion to approve those. So moved. Second. Call the council, please. Councilwoman Andre? Yes. Councilman Lane? Yes. Councilman Mortimer? Yes. Councilman Turner? Yes. Next, we have uh, the work and executive session uh, meeting minutes for April 9, uh, 2013. Do we have a motion to approve those? So moved. Second. Call the council, please. Councilwoman Andre? Yes. Councilman Lane? Yes. Councilman Mortimer? Yes. Councilman Turner? Yes. Uh, next, we have two proclamations. Uh, and I'll turn it over to Council President Turner for the first one. I'm going to jump in on the first one. Uh, on uh, April 11th uh, of this year, uh, last week, the Gateway Regional Chamber of Commerce has a uh, an annual mayor's dinner, and this year uh, our mayor, uh, Paul Mirabelli, uh, received the Mayor of the Year Award. So we'd like to give him a proclamation. Buckle your seatbelt. Uh, <laughs> whereas on April 11, 2013, the Gateway Regional Chamber of Commerce held the annual Union County Mayor's Dinner, and whereas the Mayor's Dinner is an event where the Chamber of Commerce recognizes the efforts of the 21 mayors of Union County and what they do to make this a thriving business community and whereas Paul N. Mirabelli was nominated for the Mayor of the Year Award by the members of the Local County Affairs Committee of the Chamber and whereas the Mayor of the Borough of Mountainside, Paul Mirabelli, was awarded the coveted title of Union County Mayor of the Year and whereas this award is given in recognition of Paul N. Mirabelli's support of the business community in the Borough of Mountainside. <coughs> And whereas Paul has the good sense to check with me prior to making any critical decisions, and when he doesn't, and when he doesn't and screws something up, he promptly and efficiently throws me under the bus. And whereas uh, that's just a joke. And whereas Paul N. Mirabelli, who it really isn't, shows his involvement by attending and participating in many community functions and events. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Borough of, of Mountainside hereby congratulates Paul Mirabelli for being named Union County Mayor of the Year. Congratulations. Uh, as I said that, uh, that night at the dinner, I, I, this really award is not just for me. It's for our, the entire staff here at Borough Hall, uh, all of our, our council men and women, as well as the, the community, the community itself. Uh, I, I specifically thank at the dinner Jim Debbie for all his service and, and advice that he's given to me, and for the service that he's given to the community. Thank you, Mr. Uh, over the years, John Post, who could not be here tonight, who's, who's also uh, given me some sound advice uh, over the years, and has been a dedicated attorney for for Mountainside for an extended period of time. And I also thank Council President uh, uh, Turner, who, believe it or not, does give good advice. Uh, and, and, and he's been on Council for in, in excess of, of 20 years. So I, I couldn't do it without 
uh, those three, as well as all the other staff. Martha, Jill, our, our chief financial officer, uh, Ron Romack, uh, Frank Massell, and I'm sure I forgot somebody, and they'll let me know who I forgot. So but I just want to thank the staff, and really the community itself, the volunteerism in this town, which we're going to get to in a, a minute with, with, a, with another proclamation tonight, is just what makes this town fantastic. Every time we need people to step up and volunteer, uh, everyone you know steps up. We had our uh, opening day this past uh, weekend, and that is truly a, a you know glorious you know mountainside community day. It's it's like Christmas in, in mountainside. So I know all the kids enjoyed it. Uh, I know the parents enjoyed it, and I enjoyed it. So I want to thank everyone. Now, next we have the uh, awarding of the Mabel Young Good Neighbor Award, and I guess Janet Skinner is going to make that presentation. I know she's nervous, so give her a break. Give me a break, give me a break. I'm very nervous to be up here, and I'm very happy to be up here. Thank you, Mayor. I'm very happy up here to um, introduce our, our member of our community this year, John Freer, um, being awarded um, being awarded something that, as the mayor said, this town really typifies all the volunteerism. Um, John Freer, our winner this year, moved into the town in 1997 to start his family. And uh, son John was born in 2000, and Anna 2002, and Caroline in 2004. Um, so they, they were living on Dogwood for several years, and about two and a half years ago, they moved up to Outlook. And um, when John moved up to Outlook, he already carried with him a reputation that our committee received accolades about from his previous neighbors. Um, his new neighbors now and let, let the committee know that as soon as he moved up here, he up there, he pretty much took over plowing out everyone's driveways for all the snowstorms and in doing that also kind of creating fun things for the kids to do like snow ramps for sledding and just kind of being the, the guy up there when the snowstorm hit to take care of all the neighbors. Um, in addition to that, what we're going to be talking about tonight specifically is uh, what John did during the hurricane that we all experienced. Uh, when the storm hit, uh, up there in Outlook and New Providence and Bayberry, this whole group of neighbors up there, uh, with the amount of down power lines and the down trees, uh, they were basically trapped up there for several days. And John having the house with uh, generator power pretty much opened up his home and his, his front door became a revolving door for all of his neighbors. Um, everyone was, after interviewing his neighbors, everybody was um, very clear that that was the place that was welcome. Everyone was welcome there um, for hot coffee. Everybody was cold. You'd have you'd coffee. You could charge your cell phones. Um, he extended extension cords to neighbors who you know needed to have some power in their home. Um, later in the day, apparently the coffee ran dry because other beverages came out that would kind of reduce the stress everyone was feeling, and that was also a prominent message I received too. Um, but also the kids in the neighborhood, they got to have a place to watch TV and play video games. Um, they even Many of them slept over and stayed warm at night. Um, so really John was just and is the epitome of a, of a good neighbor. Um, when I talked to John about the award, um, I just want everyone to know that he was very humble in recognizing that he isn't the only one that did this. And, you know, the whole town really did, did suffer throughout the storm. So John really exemplified a lot of what our, what our town is about. But um, interestingly, just this afternoon, I took the dictionary out and I thought, let me just look up what the word neighbor really means. And, and Webster defines neighbor as fellow man. And I think that's really like who John Freer is to all of us. And um, I just want to thank John for making Mountainside a great place to live. So thank you, John. Come on up. First of all, I want to thank Janet for all her kind words and for Janet and the other committee members for uh, nominating me to this position. Um, it's a real honor to accept this position 
you know, I felt that, you know, in the neighborhood that anybody, any one of my neighbors that had the generator would have done the same thing. So pretty much the whole neighborhood should deserve the award. I had a lot of help from my mother who cooked all the food, my <laughs> wife who kept everything clean. And, uh, you know, it just, it really, the neighborhood came together. I mean, I gotta thank the chief for his, his folks for keeping the town safe. And, uh, you know, it's a real honor to accept this award. <coughs> and, you know, I just think it's a sign of this community how well it all holds together. So thank you very much. I'm honored to accept the award. That's great, John. Uh, now, we're going to have the rest of our meeting. Uh, anyone that really doesn't want to stick around, well, you're certainly welcome to, because we do have the budget to talk about tonight. But if you don't want to, we won't be uh, insulted if you uh, leave. It's only the mundane that, that goes on uh, after this. But you're certainly welcome to stay. We don't want to chase anyone out. Except the three girls in the front row. They have to stay. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully it'll work. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, John. Congratulations. Okay, congratulations. No. no. Yeah. Oh, yeah. A report. Yeah. But I don't like to give him, mm -hmm. you know, anything that mm -hmm. sometimes. All right. Yeah, I can give him this. Yeah. I'll give him this. Good. Yep. That's perfect. Okay, next we have the uh, second reading of Ordinance 1207-2013. Uh, uh, Glenn. This ordinance establishes the municipal budget appropriation limits and to establish a cap bank as allowed by law under NJSA 40A colon 4-45.14. So we have uh, a motion to introduce the second reading of this ordinance. We have a second. Second. Okay, uh, now we're going to open it up to the public. Seeing no public participation, I move that portion be closed. Uh, so moved. The public is now closed. Uh, now roll call, please. Councilwoman Andre? Here. Councilman Lane? Here. Yes. I'm sorry. Councilman Mortimer? Yes. <laughs> Councilman Turner. Yes. <laughs> okay, ne next we have the, the budget hearing for the 2013 uh, municipal uh, budget. I just want to make a, a few comments about it before we actually open it up to the public for, for uh, uh, any qu uh, questions. Uh, th this year, the, the total uh, uh, increase is, is, is $312,000. One hundred sixty dollars and 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 twenty five cents. The the breakdown uh, in, in in general categories as to how we get to that. Uh, I'll, I'll start with the uh, expenses. First, we had an increase in the uh, health insurance and and waiver ex, uh, expense of sixty four thousand dollars. We had a joint insurance fund that went up by nine thousand dollars. Uh, we increased our reserve for tax appeals uh, by $36,000. The uh, uh, contract mandated increases for salaries for uh, police officers uh, was $137,000. Um, all uh, salaries except for police actually went down by $900. Uh, we uh, increased our uh, budget for emergency uh, uh, management, uh, basically operating, and for uh, salary and wages. It, it had been underfunded for years and <coughs> certainly came uh, apparent this year that we need to, to fund that at, at the proper level, which, which we've done. The uh, department operating budgets, we've, we've always asked them to, to at least cut 5% off of their operating budgets and the operating budgets went down by $22,526. And that's being done without cutting any services uh, uh, to the municipalities. There was an increase in our pension contribution of $30,503. Uh, the Rowway Valley Sewer 
uh, levy uh, increased by $18,000, and then we had a decrease in the cat and dog regulations of $7,000. So the, the operating expenses increased by uh, $282,177. Uh, we had some uh, ups and downs with, with our revenues. Uh, our uh, court fees went down by $22,000. Uh, our FEMA reimbursement uh, <coughs> went down $22,168.82. Interest on our taxes and investments went down by $4,000. The uh, sewer use charges went down by 16000 uh, The sale of municipal assets went down by $5,500. There were some things that, that helped us on the, on the revenue side, though. Uh, miscellaneous revenues went up $3,393. Uh, collection of uniform fire safety local fees went up uh, $8,600. Receipt from delinquent taxes went up $25,000, and our cable franchise and, and, and trust surplus went up $2,691.74. The overall effect, the shortage on the anticipated revenues uh, was down $29,983. And with the operating increase and the shortfall in the revenue, th that's how we came up with the uh, three hundred and twelve thousand one hundred and and six dollars for the portion that is uh, was uh, that was inside the cap, which is the two percent cap. We were actually un under that cap by twenty six thousand uh, two hundred ninety one dollars. Outside of the cap, though, uh, we we went up. So the total increase. Uh, over last year is going to be 4.12%, uh, uh, which is the uh, average home in Mountainside, will in, their taxes will increase by 7 points, which is approximately, no, which is $115.22. And, uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, a, a portion of the uh, increase is due solely to the decrease in the uh, 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 the market, the net value of the houses in town, the, the actual uh, a, a portion of it that was attributable to that is, I don't I know that, uh, is, is about $7, I believe. Uh, so the municipal tax rate for 2013 is going to be 1.63. We also have another uh, portion of the uh, budget which has to do with the library, which actually went down a little from last year. It went down uh, $17,000, and that's a statutory uh, amount that is, uh, 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 we have to give to the library. We've recently met with the library and through uh, shared services and some, some cost sharing, uh, the, the really the, the net drop to them is only about five or six thousand dollars, which they thought that they would be able to, to make up either with some additional uh, um, fundraising that they had planned and some a little bit of a tightening of the belt over there. So even though their, their budget went down by $17,000, the, the, uh, the, the, it was cushioned by the fact that we're going to help them out with some expenses and we're, gonna, we're also going to share some uh, uh, expenses. So uh, that's basically my report on the budget. Uh, I'll now open it up to the public uh, if anyone has uh, any questions about the budget. Come on, Scott, you gotta have something. <coughs> Scott Schmeidel, Deer Path, the Turn that around, Scott might be Scott Schmeidel, Deer Path, the movie at the library did not appeal to me, so I came here for some real action. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
I guess my principal question is, uh, you talked about emergency management, and I'm wondering uh, what in this budget may be new or additional uh, in terms of emergency management if we have a problem again like well, we had last the, year? The biggest thing is traditionally the uh, head of emergency management was Council President Turner, which was basically a volunteer position. Uh, due to the, the increased amount of certifications that are now required to be uh, the, the, the official uh, officer for emergency management, we felt that that should uh, now become a position which uh, a salary is attached to that. So we've appointed uh, uh, Chief Debbie, uh, the, the, uh, the director. The emergency management director. Director, director of emergency, emergency management. management. And we've also appointed Ron Romack as the assistant. And, and quite frankly, they're the two that were on the front lines, you know, during Sandy. I mean, they spent untold amount of hours here, uh, which, they, which they do not get compensated for. I mean, they were basically here, you know, the whole time. So we, we felt like we needed to fund that position. There was also some additional funds that were that were put into that just to, you know, to cover us in case we have any, uh, you know, future expenses that we can uh, uh, use for emergency management. There may be some increased costs in uh, improving our communication system during storms. Uh, I know they've been, uh, we, we have the uh, Communication and Information Committee, uh, which has been looking into some, some alternate ways to make sure that uh, people get informed during storms. We revitalized and revamped our uh, web page. Uh, we're, we're, we have a Facebook page now for the borough. Uh, I believe we also have a Twitter Under account, account for, yes. the, for the borough. Uh, we're still <coughs> trying to expand Union County First Alert, uh, which uh, it was it was something that uh, was, was, for the people that had it, was re were very informative during the storm. And then we're looking at some other ways to enhance uh, the communication, which are probably going to have some type of cost. So that's probably something that's going to come out of that, that okay. uh, uh, emergency management uh, budget. What was the increase in uh, the budget for that, for emergency management? I think it was only about 1000 or $1,500 in there before, right? It was th that's what was in it. Was what is it? Minute. No, what is it now? The increase, I think, was 10000 or 15000 No, no, the increase is almost the full amount of the, the $18,000 $18, was what the increase was. Yes. And I think it was under $1,000. <coughs> yeah, uh, right. It was, it was underfunded. I think it was $600 or something, $800. And I think what wound up happening in the past is we just use money from other budget lines that really should be now dedicated to emergency management. All right. Now, uh, you may have done some of this uh, already, but I, I think it myself that it's very important for you to send out something of a detailed notice to everyone in the community about exactly what you are prepared to do now and how members of the community can participate in uh, getting things done if we, God forbid, have another experience like that. Well, I think that that's already been done, actually, Scott. There was a committee that was formed. There was uh, quite a bit of uh, community participation early, early on in some yes. of the early meetings. Uh, and actually, this was what resulted in some of the, the improvements that we've, uh, uh, we've already made. So I, I think that that really has already been done. Uh, I think the only missing piece of the puzzle is uh, the, the, whether we go with, uh, continue to, to push Union County uh, first alert, mm -hmm. uh, which, I, which we understand from the county. Uh, may be enhanced to also provide some kind of voice uh, uh, messaging, which they did not have during Sandy. Uh, we are also looking at a, a Honeywell type of uh, system like the school has uh, when they notify uh, uh, parents uh, about snow days. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that I know that we're finding out is, is a problem is uh, the, one of the reasons the school systems 
Honeywell system works so well is that everyone that has a kid in the school signs up for the for the alerts. We're yes. not having the same success in in convincing people that if they want these alerts during an emergency that they need to sign up for you need you know you need yes. county first alert. It's a very simple thing to do. Yes. Uh, you know the 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 uh, uh, the alerts actually come directly from one of our officers who puts out the alert so we have a, we have a lot of control over the system and if they give us this enhanced system where we can actually you know do some some telephone calls in, in addition to text messages and, and emails then uh, uh, you know I think that'll become a very effective and it, and there's no cost to the borough to do that the Honeywell yes. system there is a cost but with a Honeywell system or Union County First Alert, people don't sign up for it, it's not going to help them. Yeah. Uh, the other thing that I know that came out of a lot of the meetings at the county level was that the, you know, all the enhanced technology that we have doesn't really do much good if we don't have telephone service and we don't have electrical service and we don't have cell phone service. Mm -hmm. So we're also lo looking into the old traditional way of communicating during a storm, which is an AM uh, uh, frequency. I know West, Westfield has it, and we have had some discussions about being able to utilize that in the storm. So the old transistor radio that, uh, I know I have one, I don't know if anyone else has one. Uh, you know, uh, is, is the way that, uh, uh, you know, is the old traditional way, but without power, without email, without text messaging. And, you know that's a, another part of the solution. <coughs> so they have we have looked into that. We did have some community involvement uh, uh, immediately after the storm. So I think we're on top of that. Well, I would only say that uh, the the everything you can do to promote signing up for the first alert, I have it. Everything yeah, you can do would be well would be welcome. On the board, anyone wants to sign up for Union County First Alert, to come down is to see how. Uh, We've been asking. You know, if anybody history. wants to know how to sign up, it's very simple. I think you go on UC. UCFirstAlert.com yeah. and you can sign up for Jim, it. How, so how many people have signed up since Sandy? I think we're at about uh, 1,800 now. Oh. So it's about a 300 people increase despite how yeah. much we've publicized it. And so people got to, you know, drink the Kool-Aid, I guess, if they want to. Yeah. Well, you could put it on this, this notice board that's out here. It's been, out there. It's been on there. Yeah. Did you have it on there? Sign up for First years. Alert? It's been it's on years. TV. Years. It's in the recreation years. newsletter. It's in the years. Westfield Leader. As you walk in, uh, the patch. Now you're embarrassing me. Two years before, yes. the, before no, Sandy not, hit. It's my, it's my tunnel vision. I didn't see it, I guess. it. Well, um, the other question is, is that I saw posted out in, in the hallway a summary of the budget, I believe. Am I am I correct? I think that's a school. I think that was a school, school budget. budget. That was just the school budget. That was the okay. School budget, right. Is there anything like that that you can look at it online? I think uh, from the website. Or is this online? It may not be online yet. No, I don't think it's going online. It will be online. Yeah. Yes. All right. Thank you. Okay, Scott. Thank you. Thank you. Now we're we're gonna uh, unless yeah. there's any other public participation, Keith. Can move that portion be closed. We're not actually going to adopt the budget tonight. The reason for that is that the state notified us uh, that there is a backup in, in them actually approving the, the, the budget. The backup is statewide. I, I understand we, we did get something late this <coughs> afternoon, uh, right before uh, the, the borough offices closed, about five minutes before the borough offices closed. So there are a couple of slight adjustments that uh, have to be made which are basically bookkeeping entries. So we're not going to be passing that tonight. We'll, we'll be uh, passing it probably at the work session uh, uh, for, for May. Uh, next, we're going back to resolutions. We have uh, resolution 58-2013. Keith. Resolution 58-2013. Having passed the resolution, a resolution awarding contract 2013-3, pending approval by municipal attorney. The bid was incomplete and therefore has been rejected. Uh, this resolution awards contract 2013-3 to the next lowest bidder, that being Penn Bauer, Inc., 
of 143 West Main Street in Highbridge, New Jersey, in the amount of $90,240. Again, uh, this will be pending the approval of our borough attorney, John Post. Uh, just to let, let everybody know, uh, we are hopeful that most of this money uh, should be reimbursed from our insurance carrier and FEMA. Uh, our pavilion over at the snack bar was destroyed during the storm. The wind <coughs> took it, kind of folded it onto itself, uh, and that's what this is for. Now, so moved. No second. Second. All the council. Councilwoman Andre? Yes. Councilman Lane? Yes. Councilman Mortimer? Yes. Councilman Turner? Yes. Okay, next we have resolution 59-2013. This resolution will authorize the borough's chief financial officer, Jill Good, to purchase gift checks in the amount of $300 for the valedictorian and $200 for the salutatorian from the 2013 Deerfield 8th grade graduating class. Second. Hold the council. Second? Yes. Second. Okay. Councilwoman Andre? Yes. Councilman Lane? Yes. Councilman Mortimer? Yes. Councilman Turner? Yes. Next we have resolution uh, 60, 2013. Deanna? The Mountainside PTA for many years sponsors the annual eighth grade pool party at the community pool and at their request this resolution will authorize the mayor and council to waive said fee in the amounts of $400 for their June event. We have a motion, we have a second. Second. All council, please. Councilwoman Andre? Yes. Councilman Lane? Yes. Councilman Mortimer? Yes. Councilman Turner? Yes. Next, we have Resolution 61 2013. Keith? Resolution 61 2013. Due to the cancellation of the Zumba class, this resolution will authorize a refund to Pamela Federbush in the amount of $76. So moved. Second. All the council, please. Councilwoman Andre? Yes. Councilman Lane? Yes. Councilman Mortimer? Yes. Councilman Turner? Yes. Uh, next we have resolution uh, 62-2013. Deanna, why don't you take this please? A resolution appointing the 2013 playground staff with Natalie H. as Rin playground. Brinkowitz. Thank you. As playground supervisor at $3,128.11 and as assistant supervisors, Paul. Your belly. Thank you. Not me. I'm not getting a second job for me. Ben Camargo at $2,235.10 and Luke Mirabelli at $2,170 for the season. We have a resolution. We have a second. Second. Call the council, please. Councilwoman Andre? Yes. Councilman Lane? Yes. Councilman Mortimer? Yes. Councilman Turner? Yes. Uh, next we have resolution 63-2013. Bill? This resolution will be forwarded to the County of Union asking permission to put up a banner across Mountain Ave and to close Mountain Ave between New Providence Road and Mountain View Drive for the annual PAL Antique Car Show Cancer Fund event held Father's Day Sunday, June 16, 2013, from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Second. We have a motion, we have a second. Hold the council, please. Councilwoman Andre? Yes. Councilman Lane? Yes. Councilman Mortimer? Yes. Councilman Turner? Yes. So for all the public, uh, save that date, Father's Day, we're gonna have the PAL annual uh, car show. I believe the nerds are also gonna be playing like they did last year at the car show, so. Uh, should be a great success. Also, Public House is stepping up this year, and they're going to be, uh, provide some uh, uh, refreshments. Uh, next, we have the uh, second reading. Yeah, we have second reading of Ordinance 1208-2013. Uh, uh, Deanna, you're up. Well, let's let Glenn do this, because somehow he left them out of it. So. Yeah, we had one today. Like the is key we have <laughs> in ordinance to appropriate the sum of $57,000 for improvements to the recreation facilities of the borough of Mountainside from capital surplus. We have a, uh, a motion, do we have a second? Second. And we want to open that up to the public. Just for the public's uh, edification, most of that money is going to come back to us through insurance. We, we adopted the uh, ordinance last month to make, last month to make sure we had the funding to uh, fund the repairs out here at the Borough Hall Field, the backstop, uh, one light, and I believe some fencing. 
Uh, we wanted to make sure it was ready for the softball season and for the, uh, the, the, the summer season. So now we need to open that up to the public. Seeing no public. Seeing no public. <laughs> I move that portion be closed. So we have a motion to close the public. We're going to close it. <clears throat> Call the council, please. Councilwoman Andre. Yes. Councilman Lane. Yes. Councilman Mortimer. Yes. Councilman Turner. <clears throat> yes. All right, next we have a motion to approve a raffle application for the Watchung Stables Auxiliary Inc. for three on-premise 50-50 draw raffles and three on-premise draw raffles. So uh, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay, so moved. Uh, next we have bills and claims. Be it resolved by the Mayor and Council of the Borough of Mountainside that the following bills of the persons named and for the amounts stated below, having been duly audited and found to be correct the 16th day of April 2013, the same be paid after Council's review if and when funds are available, and that the Mayor, Council President, Administrator, and Treasurer are hereby authorized and directed to sign and deliver warrants for same, total $1,396,233.62. We have a motion to pay the bills. We have a second. Thank you. We call the council. Councilwoman Andre? Yes. Councilman Lane? Yes. Councilman Mortimer? Yes. <coughs> Councilman Turner? Yes. Do um, we have any council comments? Uh, I have a couple, uh, Mr. Mayor. Uh, first, I want to, uh, again, as I said last, uh, last meeting, uh, I'd like to encourage uh, the community to consider volunteering for our volunteer fire department. Um, it's, uh, I know that the fire department has stepped up its efforts to increase awareness about uh, the membership or the opportunities for membership. Uh, they're exploring different programs and so forth to increase the membership, possibly a, a junior fire, uh, firefighter program which would allow uh, some teenagers, and I'm not sure the exact age, I think it's 16 to 18. Uh, to have some involvement uh, with the fire department. Um, I know since they've stepped up their efforts, they've actually had a couple, you know, a number of people express some interest, and I think uh, we have a couple of new potential members. Um, and I'd, I'd like to encourage the whole town uh, to consider uh, volunteering for this really great uh, community uh, uh, organization that does so much for our town. Um, and I don't want to take away from Deanna's uh, rescue squad as well, because I know we need some rescue squad volunteers as well. Um, now, the other thing I want to talk about briefly, and it's um, um, in, during last month, we I think the whole town received, uh, I think it was sent out to the whole town, or maybe we just got it. It was. No, the whole town got it. Uh, the Watts Foundation uh, published a, a community bulletin and uh, many people in town may be aware of the Watts Foundation, but I think a lot really don't understand what the Watts Foundation is. Um, the Watts Foundation, and I'm just going to read off of the, the, uh, the brochure or newsletter, a portion of it, because there's a lot of information in it. The George and Blanche Watts Mountainside Community Foundation supports charitable organizations benefiting the citizens of Mountainside projects that provide innovative responses to community needs, enable agencies to improve their services to Mountainside, or address positive community change in a constructive way are favored. The foundation also provides scholarship aid for borough college students. The foundation is named after George and Blanche Watts, whose estate established the foundation. In addition, Patty Komich, uh, the daughter of former mayor Joe Komich, left a portion of her estate to the foundation. Since 2006, the foundation has distributed over $1,041,000 in Mountainside. Um, there are uh, and, uh, a number of uh, members of the board um, that provide uh, another example of volunteerism um, that provide a lot of time and effort into uh, managing this foundation. Um, I think they do a remarkable job. Uh, we are extremely fortunate to have this foundation for our town. Uh, just by way of example, uh, looking through the, the, the latest newsletter, 
Um, they have provided funds to the Mountainside Softball Association uh, to uh, make improvements to the, the softball field, um, uh, which was a remarkable community event. I give a lot of credit to the Softball Association um, for their volunteerism in that effort as well. But uh, you know, there was a lot of a lot of money that was used from the Watts Foundation to fund that. Uh, there's funds that have been given to the Board of Education to improve our technology. Uh, they provided some of the funds for the purchase of the new Christmas tree lights, which were absolutely beautiful, especially in compared to what they had been in the past. Um, there are opportunities for scholarships of mountainside residents um, that, that uh, from our town. Um, a number of individuals have received scholarships over the years. Uh, Last year's recipients happened to be uh, uh, Sarah Dickert and Logan Turner and uh, Connor Stevenson. Uh, and they should be commended for receiving those, those, uh, those scholarships. Uh, they've also uh, worked with the Mountainside Rescue Squad to provide a, uh, a they funded a Rescue Squad related scholarship program which uh, is another remarkable um, idea, whoever came up with the idea, but uh, it, out, it actually is in part used to help promote volunteerism with respect to the rescue squad. Uh, they've given money to um, SAGE, which is a, uh, an elder care uh, organization at a summit, summit, but it provides service to the, uh, to the uh, elder residents here in town. And um, I was actually up at SAGE recently because uh, they had a program where you can uh, help out delivering food to some of our residents, and I did that with one of the volunteers. And um, a number of the, the Sage uh, employees commented how wonderful uh, their uh, the, they've uh, of an experience they've had with Watts Foundation and those that run the Watts Foundation, and, and how they've been able to really increase services to our senior community, um, which is just so important. And uh, sometimes goes unnoticed. Uh, they've given money to a Historic Preservation Committee of our town, the Recreation Department, um, the Boy Scouts related things. And I know I'm missing, uh, missing others, and this is just with respect to the most recent newsletter. Um, again, I, 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 they, they don't identify, I know many of those that are on the uh, board, they don't identify themselves in their newsletter, so I'm certainly not gonna at this point but um, again, I think that uh, this Watts Foundation has been absolutely phenomenal for this town. And, uh, I, and the, those that have been running it, uh, those who set it up, should be commended. Um, and they do a great service. Uh, another example of, of how Mountainside really does take care of our town and, and the volunteers. Um, so that's all I have to say. Thanks, Mayor. I just had a quick comment. Uh, again, my deepest sympathies to the families uh, that were injured during the Boston Marathon. I, I can't stress the importance. Uh, if you see something, say something. Uh, be aware of your surroundings. Uh, it seems to be a lot of crazies wandering around. Uh, it seems to be on a more frequent basis. It could, it, you don't have to be at a, at a, at a big city event. Uh, I know it's summertime. Some of us are going to be attending athletic events, concerts. Uh, it could be at your, your, your job at a corporate center. If you see something that looks uh, out of place, if you see a package laying around, if you see somebody that's acting strange, don't do anything yourself. Don't go to the package. Contact the local uh, police authority, whether it be at Mountainside or, or, or a city or at, 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 at an event. Stress uh, to your children. Be aware of your surroundings. Know what's going on. Uh, around you, we need to we need to protect each other. So please, if you see something, say something. Don't do it yourself. Contact the police. Thank you. Anyone else? I have two comments. The first is uh, we we did again this year uh, in our audit report had no audit recommendations. This has been uh, consistent for the last uh, since 2009, where we haven't had any audit uh, recommendations. And that's uh, uh, thanks to Jill and, and, and her staff. Uh, 
Also, the Mountainside uh, VFW Post uh, is sponsoring a Veterans Outreach Forum. It's on uh, May 2nd. Uh, I, it's at uh, Borough Hall. They're going to be providing a uh, free lunch, and then they're going to have someone here from the Veterans Administration to just go over what benefits are available to to veterans. Uh, you know, it's a it's a program. I think a lot of veterans don't realize what they they may uh, be entitled to in the form of. Uh, um, um, medical reimbursements, prescriptions, uh, and I think there's a lot of other benefits that they might not uh, be aware of. So the VFW is, is going to be sponsoring this uh, uh, Veterans Outreach Forum. It's, like I said, on, on May 1st. Um, also, we are in the second meeting, I think, tomorrow night of uh, moving forward with our second uh, annual Memorial Day Parade. Uh, any organizations that are out there that want to, you know, par participate, they can either get in touch with me uh, or uh, Councilwoman Andre or certainly uh, Chief Debbie. If you know any, uh, want any companies that would like to make some type of donation uh, towards the uh, parade, you can have, have them either see me, Councilwoman Deanna, or, or Jim Debbie. Uh, we're, we're, we're trying to improve on the event from last year. Actually, the VFW has contracted with the uh, uh, some uh, bagpipe band out of Basking Robins. Basking Robins, Basking Rings. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that, that, should, that should enhance the, the, the parade also. And that's going to be on Memorial Day. It's going to start at 11.30 down at uh, uh, Constitution Plaza, where we'll have our annual Memorial Day service, and then there'll be a parade uh, up Bridal Path, down Wood Valley, uh, down Central, and then we'll be back at the church for a picnic, which was a great uh, community event uh, 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 for uh, last year. Now, I was gonna mention something about the Levi Corey House, but I think I see someone from the historical preservation that might want to come up and, and say something. So unless council has nothing else to say, we're going to open it up to the audience. She waited until the very end. Wasn't planning on doing this. <laughs> Somebody else was <laughs> supposed to come. Um, I just wanted to tell the town, if they didn't know already, that we're planning to move the Levi Corey House down Mountain Avenue, uh, down New Providence Road, uh, to the library. Uh, we plan it, the house is only 21 by 42 or so, so that we're planning on putting it opposite the library on the lower part of the firehouse property. And we'd just like you to join us in trying to help us out. Uh, there's volunteerism, we don't always need your money, but we need your help any way that you can help. You can contact any of the committee members as far as that's concerned. And uh, we have a deadline as far as that's concerned for September, but we're planning on uh, doing this move and we're happy that the council is with us as far as that's concerned and we just want the rest of the town to also participate. Thank you. And for Thank those you. of you who missed it, there was a nice article in the Star-Ledger this past Sunday in the Union County uh, uh, section about the, the history of the, the Levi Quarry House and the fact that they want to uh, uh, move it. So I think it's a great, a great project and uh, I think that the community should be supporting that. Um, any other comments? Uh, no exec tonight, so we have a motion to adjourn. So moved.